Hello, my name is Mike Inglis, and today I will be analyzing the meta horror masterpiece, The Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods is an absolute deconstruction of the horror genre. And what makes it different from other horror films such as Scream, whereas Scream would use the cliches of horror movies to their advantage and really incorporate them into the movie, The Cabin in the Woods gets behind the cliches and kind of gives a fun explanation to why they happen and it really uses it in a fun way to advance the story. So I'll give a quick overview of the movie. The Cabin in the Woods is about five college students who take a trip to a remote cabin in the woods. Uh, the, you think you know the story? Well, you actually do not. The, scene, the first scene of the movie actually opens up with two um, office technicians discussing how they never fail at completing this, at the time, unknown event, and other countries participate in it also, but they talk about how America is the best every year. Um, it almost makes you feel like you've walked into the wrong movie because you don't know exactly what they're talking about. But after that, it goes to the typical, um, uh, the typical horror movie exposition with, when you have the five college students going to the cabin. So when discussing these five college student characters, you have the jock, the scholar, or the smart guy of the group, the stoner, the dumb blonde, and the virgin. The typical five horror movie cliche characters, the stereotypes that really at first seem normal, but as the movie progresses, uh, you realize they're not these typical characters. Now, it's really interesting because you find out a little later on in the movie that this is all for a grander scheme of things. The reason that each of these characters are portraying the stereotypical horror characters is because the government technicians who work in an underground facility, sort of unknown at the time, is um, because they're manipulating these characters somehow. For example, the dumb blonde, the reason she is a dumb blonde, who was originally a brunette, you find out in the beginning of the movie, uh, the, when she dyes her hair, the government put some sort of uh, hair, like chemicals in the hair dye that actually lowered her IQ to make her this stereotypical blonde, uh, dumb blonde. Uh, the same goes with the jock. It's not exactly explained how he becomes um, so like this, he pulls this alpha male persona, but even Marty, the stoner, explains how he was, he's an honor student and then one minute later he's calling his friend an egghead, which doesn't really make any sense. Um, the reason this is happening is because the movie is almost like a giant metaphor, which I will also get to later. So other than these characters that portray the cliches of the genre, there are also instances in the movie that these cliches are used and they, they do it almost in a comical way, but it's pretty cool the way they do it. It shows that the technicians in this control room, who are pre played brilliantly by um, Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford, and they bring a lot of fun to the movie, they control everything that goes on. For example, they pump in gas that makes them uh, make crazy decisions, such as going out in the woods and doing strange things out there. Um, there's even that question on why does the person drop a knife in a horror movie? after they just killed someone. Well, they send a little, the technicians send a little jolt to Dana, the, the virgin who is holding the knife. They send it to her hand and she drops the knife without even knowing it. So I thought that was a cool way of them kind of explaining why that happens or, or giving a fun like explanation for why it happens. Um, another example is Kurt the jock. He walks into a room and he says, well, after the zombies, which they summon underground, which is I will also get to later, um, Kurt is saying how that no matter what happens, they need to stay together. As he walks into another room, gas is pumped through by the technicians, and he says, no, we have to split up. And the group agrees with him, but Marty, the one who only, the only one who seems to have any um, sense of what is going on, you know, questions the decision. One of the most shocking scenes, if not the most shocking, is when Kurt is trying to jump from one side of the cliff to another on his dirt bike because he thinks that's the only way he'll get to safety. This is one of the most, or the most shocking moment of the film, as you realize, you know, anything can happen from this point on. Puppeteers. 
There's also a scene where Marty the stoner is in his room and he can hear the voices that are being subliminally sent into these the college students' heads uh, because it is later found out that this batch of weed that he had was not poisoned like it was supposed to to make him you know stupid like the rest of the kids. So he kind of realizes everything that's going on. And he finds a camera in his bedroom and he initially thinks he's on a reality TV show before seemingly be, being killed off. So towards the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where the kids go down to the basement and they all pick up some kind of item or artifact that would summon a certain group of monsters or a monster that would kill them off in orderly fashion with the virgin always being last in typical horror movies. It doesn't matter whether she lives or dies, which was later explained uh, by the technicians. Um, as long as she's last alive. So they eventually summon um, these zombies and the group, the group in the government facility, all the workers bet on which monster they'll summon each year. The film really shows um, its love for past horror movies as it includes like so many monsters and uh, icons from past horror movies that eventually get released into the, the facility. So by the end of the film, it is revealed by who is a lady who is called the director, um, played none other than by horror icon Sigourney Weaver. She explains that these gods, these ancient gods, must be uh, entertained every year by the death of these five kids, uh, or else they will rise up and rule the world like they did in the past. The reason for this, I believe, is because it is a huge metaphor for us as moviegoers. We want to see the same thing in horror movies every year, and if not, we will show our displeasure by you know, saying something bad about it online or complaining in the movie theater. It's really funny the way the writers decided to make this a huge metaphor and uh, kind of exploit us for our needs. <laughs> um, but what makes this film so great is the acting and the characters in it. In normal horror movies, you root for the characters to be killed. In this movie, you can actually root for the characters because they're played greatly and you actually care for them. And that is one of the most important things in a movie, let alone a horror movie today. The Cabin in the Woods is one of the most inventive movies, not even horror movies, uh, ever made. And after exploiting these cliches from the movie, the writers and directors did a great job of um, creating this idea where you will most likely never watch a horror movie the same again.